So up until this point, all of the work that we've done in Blender has been at the object level, which means that we're just working with objects, nothing above that and nothing below that. But if we're stuck working with these objects, how in the world can we expect to create more complex and intricate models, say a car or a helicopter, a spaceship, or even a realistic human face? It seems trivial to try and create a face using primitive shapes, doesn't it? And that's where mesh modeling comes in. Mesh modeling is an entirely different type of 3D modeling than the primitive modeling that we did earlier, because mesh modeling allows us to actually define the shapes that we're working with from the ground up. So let's start talking about the basics of mesh modeling, and that all begins with some 3D modeling theory. Just about every 3D model that you have ever seen, whether it be in a video game, the visual effects of a blockbuster film, or even an animation, were made with the same three components, a vertex, an edge, and a face. So let's talk about what exactly these are and how they make up the 3D models that we use today. We'll start small and work our way up. A vertex is simply a point in 3D space. It has no scale, it has no dimension, it's simply an X, Y, and Z coordinate. It's really not all that interesting on its own until we add a second vertex into our scene. Once we have another vertex in our scene, we can connect the two vertices together with an edge. An edge is a one-dimensional piece of geometry, and on its own, it really isn't very interesting. But if we take at least three of them and connect them together at their endpoints, we get a face, which is a two-dimensional piece of geometry. And by combining these faces in different ways, we can create just about any piece of 3D geometry that we could possibly imagine. I mentioned that there's a specific mode in Blender that we need to switch into in order to modify our mesh. That mode is called Edit Mode. And in order to switch into Edit Mode, all we need to do is come up to the upper left corner of our 3D viewport here. Currently, you can see that I'm in Object Mode. But if we need to switch into Edit Mode, we can simply click this drop down and select Edit Mode from our list. Alternatively, you can use the hotkey Tab to switch in between Edit and Object Mode. So if I press Tab, I'll switch to Object Mode. And if I press Tab again, I'll switch back into Edit Mode. Now one thing you will notice when we switch into edit mode is that the appearance of our cube changes slightly. At every corner we can now see that there is a vertex, and between every two vertices there is a line. This is the benefit of edit mode, we can alter the vertices, edges, and faces of our meshes. So let's start with some basic vertex selection and transformation. Believe it or not, there are lots of different parallels between object mode and edit mode here, selection and transformations being one of the biggest. So if I want to select an individual vertex, all I need to do is click on that vertex. Or if I wanted to select multiple vertices, I can just do the whole shift click thing, just like before. And if I want to select all the vertices, we can press A, or deselect all of them, we can double press A. So just like we can in object mode. Now, similarly, if I were to select a vertex and turn on my translate gizmos over here, you can see that we can position these vertices however we would like. Now, you will notice that if I try and rotate a single vertex, or if I try and scale a single vertex, nothing will happen. And this is because a vertex has no orientation or dimension. It is simply a point. So obviously we can't scale something that doesn't have size, and we can't rotate something that doesn't have orientation. However, if we do select multiple vertices, say these four, we can then rotate them and scale them, just as we could before, because when we have multiple vertices selected, our selected data does have orientation and dimension. Now, vertices aren't the only thing that we can edit in edit mode. We can also select edges and modify edges like we just did with these vertices, or even faces. And in order to switch what type of data we're going to be selecting, all we need to do is change this toggle up here. Currently, we have Vertex Select enabled. If we choose this option, we'll switch into Edge Select mode, which, when we left click on things, let me turn off my gizmos here, uh, click there, you'll notice that we can select individual edges. And similarly, if we switch into Face Select mode, we'll gain the ability to select individual faces. So these tools are going to be super useful for you so you can select different parts of your geometry at one time. 
So that was a lot of information in a very short period of time. So I encourage you to go ahead and open up Blender now and play around with edit mode. All you need to do is come up here to the upper left and select edit mode or just press the tab key. Make sure you play around with transformations, selection tools, all of that jazz. It's all good stuff to know and the more practice you get, the better off you'll be. So to continue our trend of drawing parallels between object mode and edit mode, we can also add and remove vertices from edit mode, just like we could add and remove objects from object mode. Even better, the two use the same set of hotkeys. We can use Shift A to add and X to delete. But here's the catch. When we add and remove vertices in edit mode, it works a little bit differently than we'd expect it to, at least with our past experience in object mode. So let me demonstrate exactly why these differ, starting with removing things, because I kind of want to get rid of this ugly deformed cube I have in my scene right here. First things first, I'm going to switch back to vertex select mode up here in the upper left, and I'm simply going to select a single vertex to work with here. I'm going to position my 3D perspective here so I'm looking at it, and you know, if I were to guess right now, if I were to press the X key to delete, I would say that vertex would probably disappear and also the lines around it and the faces that are dependent on it, right? Well, let's watch what happens if I press the X key. Ah, we get a menu. We get a bunch of different options for what we can delete, which is a little bit weird. I mean, what in the world do half these things mean? Long story short, you're probably not going to be using anything in the lower half of this, at least anytime soon, but as you become more experienced with mesh modeling, you'll definitely start using these more often. We're going to focus on these first three here though. Deleting vertices, edges, and faces. So let's talk about vertices first. Vertices, well deleting vertices, will delete any sort of vertex, edge, or face that is connected to the vertex or it's dependent on the vertex. So let me click out of this menu here. Right now, this face, this face, and this face, as well as this edge, this edge, and this edge, all depend on this vertex to exist. If we delete this vertex, we're going to delete all of these along with it. So let's try that out. If I press X and then select delete vertex or vertices, you can see that we lose all three of those extra faces that were around our vertex. Now let me undo that. This time let's select two different vertices. I'm going to select this vertex right here and we'll select this guy down here as well. Now let's try a different deletion mode. Well actually let's try the first one first. If I press X and then select vertices, of course it's going to delete all of the edges and faces that are dependent upon those vertices as well. But what happens if I select just edges? This time, if we delete the edge, we're only going to delete the edge in between and anything that's dependent on the edge. In this case, this is the edge we're going to be deleting right here, so we'll also delete this face and this face because they're dependent on the edge. But because an edge is drawn between two vertices, the vertices aren't dependent on the edge itself. So if we select delete edges, it will only delete the edge and the faces that are dependent on it because the vertices are kind of like the base construct. All right, let's delete that, or sorry, let's undo that. And let's go ahead and select a whole face this time. So I'll select two more vertices. And just like that, you can see we have a face selected because it's glowing orange here. And now what happens if I go through these same three options again? If I press X to delete vertices, obviously it will delete the vertices and anything that they're dependent upon. If I click edges, it will delete all of the edges around the edge there, but you can see it leaves these edges intact. But of course, these faces in between here did disappear because they were dependent upon these edges that went across the top. And if I press X again to delete the faces and only the faces, you'll notice that it only deletes that top face that was selected, leaving everything else intact. So this kind of puts in perspective why it's a little bit more complicated. We have to pay attention to what we're deleting and have motive behind what we're deleting as opposed to just deleting things willy-nilly. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this entire cube by pressing A to select all and then we'll press X and delete all of the vertices associated with our cube here because I just straight up don't want this cube anymore. So now that it's gone, well, it's gone, right? Well, not quite. Let me switch back into object mode here. You'll notice that when I switch into object mode and I look up here in the upper left, this is the area where it shows what object we currently have selected. And it says we still have the cube selected. And if we look up in our outliner, you can see that we still have a cube in our outliner. 
despite having deleted all the vertices associated with it. That's because we only deleted the vertices of the cube, we didn't actually delete the object itself. You can imagine the vertices as kind of like a child of the cube, or a child of the object. If the vertices are deleted, the cube's not going to be deleted. So we still have the cube object, it's just empty, there's nothing in it. So let's go ahead and actually delete our cube object. I'll press X and confirm my deletion. And as you can see, my cube's now gone. And let's add in a different shape to work with. I'm going to go ahead and add in a cylinder. Now, let me switch back into edit mode by pressing tab on my keyboard. Now, just like before, we can delete all these vertices, but what about adding vertices? What if I want to have another vertex in my scene to work with? Well, there's no easy way to add a singular floating vertex in Blender, but we can add primitive shapes, just like we could when we were in object mode. So currently, I am in edit mode, and if I press Shift A to add an object, you can see that we have our mesh list here, with all the different meshes that we have, from our plane all the way down to Suzanne here. So if I wanted to add a Suzanne head to our scene, you'll notice that I've added a Suzanne head to our mesh, just like that. Let me move Suzanne up a little bit here, just like that. Cool, so now we have Suzanne, and we also have our cylinder. But let me switch back into object mode. You'll notice that I'm unable to select the two independently of each other. And that's because both of these are part of the same object. The Suzanne head and the cylinder, although they're separate bodies of geometry, are still just a cylinder object. Which means that no matter what we do with them, they're always going to be stuck together. If we want a separate Suzanne head, we'll have to add one while we're in object mode. And when we add one here, we can position it, and if we'd like to, we can now switch into edit mode on that Suzanne head while leaving everything else unaffected. So once again, that was quite a bit of information, so go ahead and take some time to experiment in Blender. Try and mess around with that cube, deleting different parts of it at a time, and then try adding some geometry and seeing how it works with Blender's asset management and object management. So it turns out that when we actually dive into 3D modeling, it's not as useful to just add vertices willy-nilly like we did in the last video. Adding a cone to this cube here is not going to do much if I want to create a realistic human face. So what can we do instead? It turns out that edit mode actually offers a lot of different tools that we can play with to create really advanced 3D models. And I'd like to talk about a bunch of those in this video. So I'm going to be demonstrating these on our default cube here. So first things first, I'm going to press tab to switch into edit mode. And we can tell that we're in edit mode because we can see the individual vertices on the corner of our cube here. And you'll notice that when we switch into edit mode, we get a bunch more tools over here in our toolbar. Now we're not going to be covering all of these in this video because not all of them are super necessary to know yet, but we will be covering the first five here from the extrude region tool all the way down to the knife tool, which are all very useful tools to know. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go through these one by one and explain what they do. Uh, at this point, it'd probably be best if you just watch and absorb, and then at the end of this video, you can take some time to experiment with all of these tools and maybe even some of the others if you're feeling motivated. So let's go ahead and get started. This one's gonna be a fun lesson. All right, so first things first, let's look at the extrude region tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch into face select mode, and I'm just going to select this top face. And extrusions basically allow us to add additional geometry um, or expand from geometry in a certain direction. So if I select my extrude tool over here, you'll notice that we get this little plus gizmo looking thing over here. And if I click and drag on this, you'll notice that we can extrude outwards from our original geometry. You can see that the vertices that we were working with before are still here. We just added four new ones and extruded them upwards. We can also extrude in other directions, and by doing so, we can make some pretty interesting pieces. For example, a Tetris shape. Not what I intended to make there, but it came out looking like that. Additionally, we can also use hotkeys to perform extrusions. So the hotkey to perform an extrusion, if you don't have the extrusion tool enabled, is simply by pressing E. And E, for extrude, allows us to extrude in any which way, just like that. So let's go ahead and look at another tool. Now that we have a bunch of faces here to play with, we'll have a lot of fun uh, doing different things here. So the next tool down here is the inset faces tool. So I'm going to select that tool and I'm going to select a random face. We'll say this face right here. 
Now, you'll notice off the bat that we have no gizmo to allow us to inset faces, but that doesn't mean that the tool isn't active. Basically, what the inset faces tool allows us to do is click and drag on our shape, and by doing so, we can create a inset face. So we have four different faces along the outside here with an inset face in here. And now, if we wanted to, we could extrude from this face. And now we have a tiny little inset face there. So that's a pretty handy tool and will be very useful throughout your 3D modeling career. So now let's go ahead and jump on to another tool, which is one of my favorite tools, the bevel tool. The bevel tool basically allows us to make nice smooth cuts around the edges of our mesh here. So if I switch into edge select mode and I select, we'll say these three edges right here. And just like the inset faces tool, all we need to do is click and drag. And just like that, we can create a nice smooth edge. That's pretty neat. And additionally, if we really wanted like a rounded edge here, we could open up the bevel tools down here, or the bevel properties, and we can add more segments to our bevel. So we can have a nice smooth transition between one face to another. You can also adjust things like the width here and some other settings, but that's all up to you to play with if you choose to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this back down. Next, let's add some loop cuts to our scene. Loop cuts are pretty useful because loop cuts allow us to add geometry to places where it didn't previously exist. So for example, what if I wanted to make this cube up here look more like a house? So let's say it had you know the main body of the house, but it also has a roof on it. We can't currently do that because we don't have, even if I switch into vertex select mode here, we don't have any geometry to select in the middle that we can move up. So what we can do is we can use the loop cut tool to insert a loop cut, as you can see this yellow line is going to be where our loop cut is placed. If I click, you'll notice it adds in those extra vertices. And so if I switch back into, or to use my transform gizmos or my translate gizmos over here, I select these top two vertices and I move them up. Woohoo, we now have a little house on top of our really weird abstract geometry here. And finally, we have our knife tool. And our knife tool is similar to our loop cut tool in that it allows us to add extra geometry to our scene, except it allows us to be very free with it. We can add faces wherever we want. Now the knife tool is great, but it is something to be careful with because as you become more experienced, you'll learn how important it is to have clean and good looking geometry. And the knife tool is a great way to mess that up because it allows you to do so much. So if I wanted to say, add a extra triangular face in between here, all I'd need to do is use my knife tool to create a cut between these two faces. Then when I hit the enter key, you can now see that we have one face here. Oops, I still have the knife tool enabled here. You can see that we can just basically add faces wherever we would like, uh, which is cool and it's handy, but it can also again lead to some poor geometry. So there you have it. Those are the five main modeling tools that we're going to be using here. Just as a reminder, we've got the extrude tool, which allows us to extrude from faces. We have inset faces, which allows us to create smaller faces inside of existing ones. We have the bevel tool, which allows us to make nice smooth or cut edges. We have the loop cut tool, which allows us to neatly add new geometry in the middle of our faces. And then we also have the knife tool, which allows us to just go absolutely crazy with a uh, whatever we want here. So good things to know about, good things to use, uh, and go ahead and experiment with these now because these are a lot of fun and with these you can do a lot of different things.